Hi everyone, it's Mr. B, and in this podcast we're taking a look at classifying organisms. In this picture up here you'll notice that there's a basket that's filled with fruits and vegetables and they all have spilled over. And if I asked you to organize it in some way, um, you might choose to organize it in um, a way that's based on color. So you might say, let's see, I see some red objects in there, so I'm going to take this tomato and I'm gonna put it right over underneath the red section so tomato and I notice that there is a uh, red chili pepper so I could say that there is a pepper and I can move on to other colors so I could do green and I notice that up here there is a watermelon so I could bring that down and say that there's a watermelon Um, I could also notice that looks like there's a green pepper right there, so green pepper. And I could go on doing all the other objects based on color, or I might look at size, or I might look at shape, and there's all kinds of ways that I could organize these. But the more complex the organism, like this one right here, this dinosaur, um, the more challenging it's going to be. And so scientists had to come up with a way that they were comfortable with organizing um, and classifying different organisms. So that's what this podcast is going to be about. So why do scientists classify? Scientists classify um, basically to organize groups um, so that it's easier for them to study. And down here you can see that there's uh, this is a bunch of beetles. And the beetles all have different colors, they're different sizes, um, some of them are uh, have longer legs than other ones and so if you were to discover one of these um, you would want to make sure that you put it into the beetle family because otherwise it would be very challenging to figure out um, how it's different from other organisms and so this whole process is known as classification classification is the process of grouping things based on their similarities so because of the fact that these are very similar to each other we could put them into the beetle family um, the overall process or study of classification is known as taxonomy and so taxonomy is the study of how living things are classified so this taxonomy is very much um, goes right with classification so it's basically the study of how we classify things um, the naming system comes long long ago and um, you meet there's a scientist uh, his name was Linnaeus and he came up with a way to basically um, two names that would go to an organism and so his system was the first one it became very popular and over the years um, there's been additions to it but uh, this uh, Linnaeus guy was the first one to really introduce us to a term called binomial nomenclature which is the naming system um, of two names and so over here uh, I pulled a picture of a cat um, it's a house cat and so it's given two names and we could call this Felis and then Domesticus and so what that really means is house cat and so when we go through this video you're gonna learn that there are two names the first name or the first word is given that would be the genus and the second name then would be the species and so we might have a whole group of um, Felis, meaning different types of cats, and so we could take a look at like how those cats fit together. Um, but when we get more specific into the species, uh, what we're really looking at then is um, how they're different. So how is a lion different from a house cat? And so down here, genus is the first word in the organism's scientific name. Species is a group of or uh, similar organisms that can mate with each other and produce offspring that can also mate and reproduce. Okay, so this is the definition of species. Um, very important to understand that they have to be able to mate with each other and they can also reproduce. Um, the first word scientific name classification contains similarly similar close related animals second word is a distinctive feature of the organism such as where it lives or its appearance so down here I have three different types of cats ok 
Okay, I, and you'll be able to notice that it says feelless, and over here it says feelless, and over here it says feelless. And so they all fit together, they're all different types of cats, um, but they all have different species names. Okay, so you can see that down here we have con color, and over here we have another species name, and over here we have another species name. And so this con color is meaning that it has the same color. All right, very simple. Um, over here, it means that it's a marbled pattern of the animal's coat. So you can see that there's um, all kinds of different colors that are in there, kind of a marble color to it. This one has all the same color. And then because of the fact that this one is tagged with the domesticus name, um, it means that it's uh, of the house. That's what domesticus means. It means of the house. And so this would be a house cat. But all of them are cats. This cat is similar to this cat, which is similar to this cat. And so they all kind of fit together. Um, we have specific levels of classification. And I have a mnemonic device that I'd like you to try to memorize. Um, the mnemonic device goes like this. It says, uh, did King Philip call out for good spaghetti and so if you can remember this you will not forget uh, your levels of classification because did goes with domain, king goes along with kingdom, Philip goes with phylum, call goes with class, out goes with order, for goes with family, good goes with genus, Spaghetti goes with species. And so these are different um, levels of organization or classification. Uh, this is the largest group, and this is the smallest. So we're really looking at um, just kind of an overall general grouping to getting down to the, the very small details about the organism. And so um, here's an example of a picture where you can see that there's all kinds of different organisms that are in there, and slowly it works its way down. I believe this is an owl. Um, I know the picture isn't the greatest, but in your textbook there's uh, plenty of examples. And so you can see that the owl fits into this big group that has like a lion and it has a tree um, because of the fact that it fits into like levels um, of classification that we talked about earlier, like cellular organization, energy, um, how to distinguish living things. But as we continue to get more and more specific, uh, what happens is that it loses um, other items. It might be very similar to something else, but eventually it becomes its own individual. Um, the taxonomic key, you did a lab with that, uh, where you were basically looking and setting up um, how to uh, determine um, the identity of an organism. So you had things like uh, the washer, and you had, um, let's see, you had a washer, you had a toothpick, and you had um, a button, and you had a hex nut. And so what I asked you to do really was to try to come up with a way to organize or identify these. So you might have said, um, I believe there was a marble that was in there too. So that way we try to get them all. Um, you might say it is silver. Okay, so is the object silver? Okay, so you might say 1A is, is the object, is the object silver. And then if yes, um, you would go on to 2A. If no, you'd go on to 2B or something like that. And so, uh, and that's, that's exactly what this does over here. It asks you the questions and it helps you to identify it. And um, scientists use this all the time, uh, especially when um, they're trying to, they discover a new organism and they're trying to figure out uh, what it's most sim similarly about or similar to. Um, another term that's important is evolution. Um, evolution is the process by which species gradually change over time. And so if we were to look at, um, there's been a couple times where we've done a question of the day where uh, you saw a bird's beak and you'll notice that um, over time it has changed from either being uh, thicker uh, to thinner or thinner to thicker and slowly it's kind of changing so that way it's able to um, uh, get its food and, and 
not have to uh, try to break a nut um, or some type of seed um, with a beak that isn't strong enough. And so uh, evolution helps the organism to better adapt to its, its environment. And uh, so that's the end of the first or the second section. And um, hopefully, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email. Be ho hopefully, you're able to um, read this chapter section and you're able to watch this and take away what you need to. All right.